Hello and welcome to lesson number five. In this lesson I'm going to finish off the coin game, collection game that we did last last time. Um, I'm going to add in a sound effect and then I'm going to change the, 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 the layout of the text that we use. I'm going to make it larger and change the colour on it. But before I do that I'm just going to tidy up the text, uh, the, the code that I did last time. I'm going to, I'm going to indent it. So I'm just going to make it so that it's a bit neater, so that if we ever need to come back and edit the code or change things, it's not so badly laid out. So, and I put in one return too many, so that's our game code tidied up and looking a little neater now. So. The first thing that I did was I downloaded a sound file from the internet and it's called ring1.wav and I've copied that to my media folder. So I now need to just follow my template and I'll put in load sound 100, I'll keep it away from the images and I'll call it ring1.wav. It needs to be a WAV file. So if you do have MP3s you need to convert them to WAVs. There's plenty of, of tools out there to convert. So now that I've loaded the sound in, all I need to do is go to my game and I go, if there's a sprite collision, the good guy hits a coin, randomly place the coin over those set coordinates and then play sound 100. Now when I compile that I should get an error that it doesn't understand line 82. It needs to be in, bra in brackets. So once I do that, compile the code. Um, the game ends at 5 so we should be able to collect 5 coins with a sound effect. So let's give it a try. And that was five rings each time we collected a coin. So putting sounds into the game, as you can see, is very easy. The last thing I wanted to do was, if quite quickly if I run the game again, you'll notice that the score is in its standard font and size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at changing that. So I went to the help and when I was in the help, I I went to, I think it was guides and text and I learned a little bit about how about creating text so you can actually enter text. That, that was quite helpful but I prefer to go to the, the examples and I just looked for for working with print and where was it? I don't think it was there then it must have been in in examples. There are text and basic print commands and in in this it does it does it shows you this the standard text that you get there well if you read it a little further down it does say set print size set print spacing and set print color so we'll just play with those ones for for now so i put it into my main do loop i could just as easily have created a go sub for this as well but I didn't feel the need to on that particular occasion. And so let's do set print size to let's try 55. Compile that and run it. And you can see the text has gone a lot bigger. We can we can reduce that size if you want. And then and then if I remember correctly, it said set print color 
red, green, blue, so they'll, they'll be the values. So, so to make it red then, all I would need to do is set print color and it would be 25500. I'll compile that and it doesn't understand it because I've spelt it without properly. So I'll compile it again, I run it, we should now get red. And just as easily if I change that to that should give us blue. Red, green, blue. So that should give us that's correct. And then finally, I'll change it. Last one, that should give us the blue. So that's our game created with the sound effect. Um, the next, the next lesson, I'll. Put a timer in and after that we'll probably go for creating um, an enemy that will follow you around the screen and each time it, it the enemy hits you you lose a life thank you for that